All right, I see our participant count going up. This is great. So welcome everyone. Welcome to the Edison Township High School College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share about their institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer questions. My name is Chelsea and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so panelists cannot see or hear you, but you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to the presenters at any time. This is one of many sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website and all those sessions are recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Edison. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter and that is the University of Mary Washington. All right, hi everyone. Um, my name is Amanda Hart. I am one of the assistant directors for admission at the University of Mary Washington. Um, and I'm so glad you can all join us tonight. Um, so to just get started with kind of some overview information about who we are. Um, Mary Washington is located in Fredericksburg, Virginia. We have a really fantastic location. We are right in between Washington, D.C. and Richmond, Virginia. Um, so it takes about an hour in either direction on I-95 um, to get to either the state capital or our national capital. Um, so it means that our students have access to everything that both of those cities have to offer while still being in a small, safe college town environment. Um, we are a state of Virginia um, university, and so so um, our in-state tuition um, and out-of-state tuitions are listed there on the screen. We've got about 4,100 undergraduate students, so we're pretty small. Um, we do have a couple hundred graduate students, but they have their own campus in Stafford, Virginia, about 20 minutes away. And so everything that you'll see and hear about today is just for our undergraduate students. Um, all of the resources, all of our faculty exclusively work with the undergraduate population. We have a 13 to 1 student to faculty ratio with an average class size of about 19 students. Um, so things stay very small, similar if not smaller than what most students are experiencing in their high schools. Um, and so if you want that really close knit environment, um, this is where you're going to find it. Um, even in our largest classes, um, our largest lecture hall on campus only holds 75 people. Um, and so classes can't get any larger than that. And we only have one of those. So it's very few and far between. Um, most of our classes stay very, very small. Um, I typically tell students that if you're looking to go somewhere to kind of keep your head down and not have anybody in your business, um, we're not gonna be the place for you because um, we really do get to know each other here. Um, your faculty care about you and they're gonna, want, they're gonna email you if you um, miss class to make sure everything's okay. Um, all of our classes are taught by our faculty. You will never have a um, TA or a graduate assistant teaching any of your classes. Um, and that includes your research experiences as well. Um, so like I said, we don't have any graduate students on our campus. So all of the research that's happening at Mary Washington is happening with undergraduate students, which means that you can get involved in research from the very first days that you're on campus. Um, in fact, we have over $750,000 set aside every year to support undergraduate research. Um, and that includes our Summer Science Institute, um, where you can actually receive funding to stay on campus for the summer. We cover your room and board, plus you get a stipend for funding to support your research. Um, and so we have lots of students who complete that program every summer and take that research on to either a professional or graduate career. Um, as for our student life, we have over 150 different organizations and clubs on our campus. Um, we have everything from, um, you know, your sports. Um, we have um, varsity club and intramural sports. We're in division three, so we've got all levels of competition available, um, but then we also have clubs that focus on community service. We have clubs that um, focus on career readiness and, um, you know, developing your specific career field, um, all the way to things like our lightsaber club that has laser battles in the gym um, or our botany club that focuses on plant cultivation. So there really is a little bit of something for everyone. 
Um, if you're the kind of person who's interested in study abroad, we have 135 different study abroad programs in 56 different countries. Um, study abroad is actually one of the things that you can do to fulfill your experiential learning requirement that we have here at Mary Washington. Um, so we think that it's really important that you get, side up, get outside of the classroom and apply what you're learning to real world scenarios. Um, so there are four things that you can do. You can do that undergraduate research that I talked about. You can study abroad in one of those 135 different programs. You can do an internship. Most of those come out of our Center for Career and Professional Development. Um, or you can do a service learning course. Um, service is something that's really important at Mary Washington um, for the 2018-2019 school year, which is kind of crazy to think about was our last normal school year. Um, our students did over 19,000 hours worth of community service. Um, and that's just what the university knows about. That doesn't include um, things that they were doing in their own time. So service is something that's really important to us um, and really important to who we are. Um, if you are coming interested in coming to visit us, we would love to have you on campus. Um, we do tours six days a week, Monday through Friday. Um, you can join us at 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. for a campus tour, as well as on Saturdays, we have tours at 9.30 and 11. Um, so lots of options. We also have some great events coming up. Um, we have two of our admitted student days, which we call Destination UMW. We have one in March and one in April, as well as um, another open house coming up here in April. Um, so we've got lots of opportunities for you to come to campus and learn about who we are. Um, but in the meantime, we would love it if you would follow us on our social media platforms. You can find us at most places. Um, if you type in at Mary Wash, um, Mary Washington Admissions, um, all also has our own personal Instagram. So if you find at Mary Wash Admissions, um, we would love to have you. Um, our contact information is on the screen. So if you have any questions, concerns, or anything like that after this session, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to be in contact with you. Awesome. Thank you so much. All righty. Next up, we have Ramapo College of New Jersey. Okay. Excellent. Well, thanks so much um, for um, allowing me to present today. Thanks so much for coming, you guys. I appreciate it. My name is Kevon Hemmings. I'm one of the admissions counselors at Ramapo College in New Jersey. I'm just going to get right into it. All right. So a little bit about Ramapo. We're known as the smallest four-year public school in New Jersey. We have with about 6,000 students in total, undergrad and graduate together. Um, the cool part about that is we really focus on an average class size of 21 and our largest class is 35. And as a public school in New Jersey, that's unique. So this way you're not in a really, really big class um, with 100 plus students, um, but more so in a public school with small classes. So students are more comfortable talking to their peers and their professors as well while they're on campus. All right, so just a little bit about some of the uh, majors that we offer. So on our right, on my right side, there's um, some of our academic schools on our campus, um, business, contemporary arts, humanities and global studies, social science, and theoretical and applied science, and some um, examples of each of some majors underneath each school, okay? Um, so students can obviously major in either one of those. We do allow, um, obviously, students that minor, and some of our students do double major on our campus. And on our left side, we have four plus one programs. We want students to stay, you know, that one extra year and get their master's degree as well um, to help them stand out a little bit. Um, we are adding computer science as a master's degree and applied math. So they both will be options for four plus one programs starting next year. And then also our joint degree programs that we have with other institutions. Um, these do require an SAT score. Uh, we are test optional across the board other than that. Um, but this does require an SAT score. Um, the law program does not require one um, as of this year. And internships for all uh, majors, right? We're lucky to be in New Jersey. We're really close to the biggest city in the United States, New York City, over 8 million people, a lot of um, companies as well. Let's take advantage of that being close to us and our proximity. And so a lot of our students do take advantage of the internships we have in New York City. We have a bunch in international um, internships as well, as well as internships right here in our garden state too. All right, so a little bit about student involvement. So like I said before, we do have study abroad. Um, we have over 500 programs globally, 
Um, basically, we could send the, the student really anywhere that they're interested in, but we do have a lot of specific partnerships with other schools in different um, countries as well. They can really go from one week to one year. So if they want to go spring break or a full year, and then also internships, like I said, in 45 countries. We're D3 Athletics, and if you do have any specific athletics questions, let me know. I'm also the athletics liaison in our admissions office. Um, and we also have a bunch of clubs, organizations on campus. Um, we have Greek Life as well. Um, very unique clubs like the beekeeping club. They manage bees. They make honey. The Dumbledore's Army Club to the clubs organizations you would see at a lot of a lot of colleges. The pre med club, the nursing student organization, the Black Student Union, etc. So there are different clubs organizations. We're very big on leadership at Ramapo. We want to make sure the student gets involved. Um, and there's a lot of different ways that they can get involved on campus and even in our community. Um, we are also known for having really nice college dorms. Niche.com rated us number one again this year for our college dorms. Um, we call them residence halls on, on campus. So, um, and we're also ranked in the top 2% in the United States from Niche.com. So um, there's a lot of perks for living on campus at Ramapo. If you do have any questions about that, you can go over it. Um, but it's really nice to live on campus and a lot of our students do choose to do so. All right, so just some admissions information. We're on the Common App, the Coalition App, and our own regular Ramapo application. They're just three platforms that do the same thing. They're just applying to the college. We're test optional across the board, even for our nursing program. So we do not need your SAT score, ACT score, even for our nursing program, unless you're going for one of those joint degree programs that I mentioned earlier. We don't have a minimum GPA, but an average is 3.4 and a 4.0 scale. We do need one letter recommendation, two is preferred. And of course, we'll give you credit if you're taking APs, um, exams, dual enrollment. Um, and we also have an honors college as well, if you're interested in that. Um, really quickly, just our price, our tuition and fees are at the top here. And then our housing and meals are here as well. So we're about $30,000 a year with everything included as well. Um, freshman, you can bring your cars on campus. That's actually already including your tuition. So it's not like an extra fee on top. And if you don't have a car, you can waive it as well. Um, these are the two scholarships that we were giving out this past year. It's a half tuition scholarship and a full tuition scholarship, right? Um, so those are the two that we give out, as well as an EOF program. This is our EOF scholarship, in addition to the state grant that you get from the state, um, as well as any other grants, the Pell Grant, the TAG Grant, et cetera, that you will get in your financial aid as well. And if you don't get a scholarship coming in, we have over 400 scholarships for continuing students that they can apply for. And then some scholarships where you're already um, just opted in and you might get one. When I was a student at Ramapo, I just got a scholarship one year. Um, and so that's something that we, you know, we do to help our students as well. Um, a little bit about um, our social media. Please follow us on social media. We are having campus tours Monday through Friday and Saturdays at 10 and 1. So we do want students and parents to come up, look at our campus. We were ranked um, top 50 this year in the United States from Condé Nast Traveler. Um, from how beautiful our campus was. We're at the foothills of the Ramapo Mountains. It's beautiful. Um, students love the area. They love living on campus and the scenery as well. Um, so please feel free to come up on campus. And if you do have any questions, that's my name, um, obviously where I work. Uh, phone number, uh, our text number, and our admissions email. And I'll throw, um, and if you guys want that information, please let me know. But I appreciate it. And thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Next up, we have the University of Southern Maine. All right. Good evening, guys. The sound full screen. Awesome. All right. Welcome. So my name is Julia Gurney. I'm the Senior Associate Director here at the University of Southern Maine. I'm happy to be here with you tonight. Um, if you are looking for a journey in your college experience and five and a half hours from home sounds nice, uh, Maine might be the place for you. Um, and so let's talk about USM by the numbers. So 8,500 total population that includes our undergraduate, graduate and law students, 13 to one student to faculty ratio, 54 majors, 79 minors, 28 graduate degrees, as well as a variety of accelerated graduate pathways. Our average incoming GPA of our students is about a 3.31. We are a four year public university in the UMaine system. And one of the more unique facets of USM, which we'll talk about, is that we do have three campuses in the Southern Maine region. And because we are located in the most populous area of the state of Maine, we have 400 plus host sites and clinical options and internships available for our students. So three campuses, one university. What does that mean for you? It means a lot of options. The vast majority of our students who attend the University of Southern Maine are going to spend time in both Portland 
uh, which is probably a city that you've heard of in Maine. Like I said, most populous city in the state of Maine, um, as well as 20 minutes outside of Portland, we have our Gorham campus. And so, like I said, our students are gonna be spending time in Portland, which is considered to be our urban campus, as well as in Gorham, which is about 20 minutes away, which is much more of your quintessential New England college campus, um, historic buildings, green spaces, big trees, um, things like that. The two things that make our campuses distinct is what's on them. And so there are specific academic programs that are housed on each campus. Um, there are student resources that are housed on each campus. Our athletic facilities for our D3 athletics programs are housed on our Gorham campus. And currently right now, all of our residence halls are on our Gorham campus until our residence hall on the Portland campus opens in the fall of 2023. So students don't really have to choose between a rural and an urban setting. They're gonna get one within one university. And it really provides students an opportunity to explore um, kind of two facets of Maine. We also do have a Lewiston campus, which is home to specific academic departments, as well as our master's in occupational therapy program. It's about 45 minutes north, as you can see from the previous map. And so students who are really going to be spending time in Lewiston are going to be the ones who are, who are pursuing academic programs um, in, in that, on that campus. So when it comes to the academic experience at USM, uh, we really strive for students to leave with solid experience, right? We very much believe that there is so much that happens in the classroom that you can learn, but also it's very important for students to take what they've been learning in the classroom and apply it to a field that they might be interested in. We say that internships are a really great way to learn what you don't want to do, but more, more specifically what you do want to do when you graduate. And so all of our students are required to do some sort of external or internship experience before they leave USM. So you'll have, of course, a general education requirement, your major and your minor courses, that internship external experience, as well as ample opportunities for research and a really vibrant honors program, which comes with free study abroad options. When it comes to tuition and fees, we wanna be very transparent. And we believe that college, going to college and pursuing your, your education should be affordable. As residents of New Jersey, you're gonna be looking at about $36,000 a year. That's everything, tuition, fees, room, board, estimated books and supplies. If you have above a 3.5 GPA, we can guarantee a merit-based scholarship of, of $12,000 a year, um, which means that oftentimes you're gonna be spending less to come to us out of state as you would be to stay in the state of New Jersey. Um, so really great opportunity to take advantage of some merit scholarships in addition to any sort of federal financial aid that you would qualify for. If you are a senior and you are considering applying and have not applied yet, our merit scholarship deadline is gonna be April 1st this year. So that's coming up quickly. Um, but if you're a junior, you have more than enough time to start that application over the summer and into the fall. So when it comes to the application, we really wanna make sure that it is a seamless process for you. Every college does it a little bit differently. And so we do try to be as transparent with this process as possible. So we're a common app or a main application school. It is $0 to apply to us. We are SAT, ACT optional for all academic programs. And we were proudly SAT, ACT optional prior to the pandemic. All we really need from you is an official high school transcript. But what we would love to see, obviously, is anything that you would provide us in addition to that, an essay, a recommendation letter, and give us an idea about what you, how you've been spending your time the last four years. If you're planning on applying to a program that is in theater or arts, that will require an audition or an interview process. The most exciting thing that's happening on USM's campus is, of course, our Portland Campus Development Project. Um, it's a fantastic investment in the future of USM, where we are in the process of constructing um, a brand new student center, career and employment hub, dining facility, as well as almost 600 beds of a new Portland Commons residence hall, which is going to be one of the largest passive house, passive house buildings in the United States. Um, which means that sustainability was at the forefront of this construction. So if Maine sounds like a good time to you and you are ready to come on up, we'd love to have you. Um, we are offering tours Monday through Friday as well as on Saturday. And feel free to take advantage and reach out to us if you have any questions. Thanks. Thank you so much. All right, next up we have the College of New Jersey. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Amanda Simpson, and I will be sharing 
some information with you tonight about TC and J. So just by way of providing kind of a high level overview about the College of New Jersey. So we are considered a small size public institution. We're located in Ewing, New Jersey on a very beautiful uh, campus situated in a rural suburban town. So our students get to live and learn in a gorgeous environment, but also have access, easy access to both Philadelphia and New York City. The look of our campus, as you can see from this photo, really uh, mirrors what you or what students often think of when they think of the kind of traditional college often depicted in movies. And TCNJ's campus culture, I would say, is defined as a place that is genuinely warm and welcoming. Students, faculty, and staff are kind. They enjoy spending time together, working together, as corny as that might sound. Um, and that really captures kind of the heart of the community at TCNJ. As a public institution, TCNJ is often, though, mistaken for a private college. And that's due to a couple of, of things. So first, we are known for very small class sizes. The average is slightly higher than what you see here. About 24, 25 students is the, the average. But our largest class is capped at about 50 students. We're also known for some very strong student outcomes. So we have an incredibly high first year retention rate and overwhelming majority of our incoming students realize they've made the right choice choosing TCNJ so much so they come back a second year. We have the fifth highest or rank in the top five for four year graduation rates in the nation. So it's really important to us to help our students have a great experience and get to the end of their chapter in a timely fashion. And then we also have an incredibly a high job slash graduate school placement rate. Over 96% of our students are either employed or in graduate school within one year of completing their studies at TCNJ. And that really speaks to the kind of value that students should expect to get from a TCNJ experience. We are known for offering rigorous, high quality academic programs. We offer more than 50 majors spread out among seven different academic schools. And one of the things that I'll point out about our academic programs that's important for prospective students to know is that we are a direct admit or direct entry school. So if you are really passionate about a specific academic major, about a specific career path, and you like to jump into your studies sooner than later, then considering a direct entry school like TCNJ will certainly give you that kind of opportunity. In terms of the campus, life, TCNJ does have a vibrant campus, and that's due in large part to the um, fact that we're a residential college. Most of our students live on campus, but also because we have a large number of student clubs and organizations, and students are very involved in co-curricular opportunities. So it's very common that students engage in internships, undergraduate research, study abroad, and so many other ways of working together, and also working very closely with faculty. If you are a senior and you are interested in the College of New Jersey, then of course the natural next step for you would be to apply and submit your application. And so uh, TCNJ accepts the application online either through the Common App or the Coalition platform. Most of our 50 majors require the same application materials um, and we do not have any minimum GPA requirements for our majors. We are currently operating under a test optional policy through fall 2023. So for current uh, seniors and juniors, whether or not you've taken the SAT or, S or, or ACT test will not have an impact on your admission to TCNJ. But if you are interested in applying, there are two important things to know as first year students. You can apply either through the early decision program or through our general admissions program, depending on your interest in TCNJ and how much flexibility and time and research that you feel like you need to do to really make a decision about committing to the College of New Jersey or not. We are offering a number of opportunities for students to learn more about TCNJ. So we're offering campus tours Tuesday through Friday. We also have a select number of weekend tours. And then for students interested in learning more about some of our academic programs, we're offering some special weekend tours as well. Feel free to register and kind of stay connected with us through our admissions website here.
Thank you so much. Okay, next up we have Hofstra University. All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Hoffman, and I am the uh, Dean of Admission for the State of New Jersey for Hofstra University. Hoping everyone can see my screen here. Um, Zoom isn't quite letting me know if you can. Let's see. There we go. Um, but I'm coming from, to you from about 20 minutes north of TCNJ. So although Hasha is located out on Long Island in New York, um, I am actually a regional rep. And so I am originally from and work out of Flemington. Um, I was actually just over at Edison and J.P. Stevens High Schools today. Um, and so I'm in the area quite frequently. And the reason why I lead off with my contact info is because I am going to be your point of contact for all things Hofstra. So I'm an alum myself, been here for about 10 years total, um, and I'm more than happy to connect you with the right people, get you the right resources and answers and information. So whatever you need from Hofstra, I am your guy. So a little bit about kind of big picture things going on at Hofstra. So like so many of the schools that we are hearing from tonight, uh, average class size is 21 with a 13 to one student to faculty ratio. Of course, we already know the benefits to that. Um, at Hofstra, you know, we always joke that you hear the words, your professor will know your name um, quite a bit, uh, you know, as you're touring different colleges, um, that's kind of the expectation. But at Hofstra, it means that they're gonna know a little bit more about you so that when it comes time for your internship, and you know letters of recommendation and all that good stuff they're going to be able to write you some incredibly detailed really thorough letters letters of recommendation that really speak to your qualities as a candidate for that position our uh, 6500 undergraduate students are studying from 165 different majors and minors and those students are coming from about 48 different states and 78 countries so we have representation from all corners of the world and we love how diverse our student body is. Some more numbers uh, from our campus. So we have 220 different clubs and organizations, um, including some longtime favorites now, such as Hasha versus Zombies, which is a giant sort of live action role-playing game, um, sort of like a zombie outbreak with you know, zombies and humans, et cetera. Um, specifically within the clubs and organizations, we have 21 D1 sports teams, including pictured here our men's basketball team, which has been on an incredible tear through the Colonial Athletic Association recently. Um, they're actually headed down uh, to, I believe it's DC this weekend for the CAA championships, uh, where we will see if we're going to March Madness this year. So we're very excited about that. Our students are also incredibly service oriented, accounting for over 100,000 uh, community service hours each and every year. That did not stop when COVID hit. Our students just had to get a lot more creative with it, but they did not dip below that 100,000 hour community service mark. And another number that is helpful to know, four years of guaranteed on-campus housing. You will always have somewhere to live. You're not going to have to fight a senior for that last bed on campus. You're also going to have free parking on campus, whether you live on campus or you are commuting to the school. I always tell my New Jersey students that Hofstra is in the Goldilocks zone, especially students coming from Central Jersey like we are. So 25 miles to New York City, of course, we're on the other side, but we still have that New York City access. It's the right amount of distance from home if we're coming from Central Jersey where mom and dad can't come and surprise you randomly on a Saturday morning and kind of you know throw you off your weekend plans. But at the same time, if you miss home cooking and you want to see your family, it's super convenient to get home and get there to see that. Of course, I mentioned the internships, which our students are really taking advantage of in the city, um, but we also have a ton of great things going on all around us so that students don't even feel the need to go into the city if they don't have to, including beaches about 25 minutes north of us and 25 minutes south of us. So when our New Jersey students are seeking out Hofstra and they're specific, uh, seeking out a specific program, I actually crunched the numbers this morning, and these are the top six programs that students are looking for at Hofstra. Uh, the School of Communications, School of Business, Engineering, 
Um, those three schools are the biggest for New Jersey students. They're also looking for our direct entry medical program partnered up with Northwell Health, which is actually one of the most competitive in the country. Um, they're looking for our direct entry accelerated law program or leap, leap program and our direct entry PA program. But like I said, 165 majors and minors to choose from. These are just the top programs for New Jersey students. Looking at numbers, um, if you are looking at our average scholarship that was awarded this past year, uh, it was about $28,000 per year on average. You maintain a 2.8 GPA during your time at Hofstra, you will have that for all four years. Um, and the average overall financial aid package was about $38,000 per year. It's also good to know that we are ranked within the top 7% nationally in mid-career salary, which is according to a third-party site, payscale.com, and 93% of our graduates are employed and or in a grad program within just six months of graduation. And finally, for those of you who are staring down that common app or coalition app coming up in August here. It's crazy that it's you know that soon. Um, these are the numbers to keep in mind. We've been test optional for over 10 years and that policy is not going anywhere. Um, know that we're an early action school, so you will have an earlier decision than most, but it is non-binding. Um, again, my name is Chris. I will be your guide through this entire process. So reach out and let me know how I can help. Thanks everyone. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And next, I'd like to pass it off to Mercy College. Hi, everyone. I'm just trying to pull up the screen over here. Just some. Um... A little technical difficulty is something we're all kind of accustomed to at this point, right? Okay. All right, let me just stop sharing just a quick second. Sorry, guys, for some reason, my computer's freezing up just a bit. All right. Okay, now it's gonna work out here. Sorry about that, everyone. All right. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Gianella Brignoni, and I'm the New Jersey admissions recruiter for Mercy College. So let's kind of get right into it. Uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. So Mercy College does have three campuses. So we're located in the Dobbsbury campus, Bronx campus, and Manhattan campus. I guess a little bit about myself. Uh, I was a student at Mercy College relatively recently, actually. I just graduated last year. So in terms of having that student perspective, I got you guys there, so no worries about that. So let's get into it, right? So Dobbs Ferry, I would say from a student perspective, that's the main campus. That's where you're gonna find all your classes are gonna be at. Uh, we do have dorms in this campus as well. As we can see in the next slide, uh, this is our pride and joy of Hudson Hall. So Hudson Hall actually, we're, uh, our sophomores to seniors will reside in this, uh, in this residential building. And we do have a direct view of the Hudson River. So that was always a fan favorite, especially mine, because definitely you can go outside, the Wi-Fi reaches outside near the Hudson River and you can do your homework out there, which is honestly really great. So again, the Dobbsbury campus, we actually have two residential buildings. So we have Hudson Hall and Founders Hall. So when you're looking at in terms of the dorm styles, we do have singles. So let's say you do want to reside by yourself on campus. No worries there. I did that for my three years at Mercy College and it was, it was pretty fun. We also have doubles as well. So in Founders Hall and Hudson Hall, these are the types of dorms that you can, you can get as a student at Mercy College. Now we do have the Manhattan campus. So this is something that has been an exciting upcoming project for Mercy, quite honestly. And I'm not sure if y'all can see in the background, but you're gonna see the Macy's. So yes, 
Mercy College has a campus right in the heart of Herald Square on 35th Street. Um, we have dorms there now, actually, too. So if you do want to live in New York City and you want to do your studies there, have that direct access to internships and all that good stuff, you're more than welcome to come to our uh, Manhattan campus and live there. Believe it or not, they are they're brand new guys, extremely brand new. We had our first batch of students residing on campus literally like this, this last year. So we have a vibrant uh, international student population. So I guess another little fun fact about myself is that I'm currently pursuing my master's at Mercy. And a lot of my peers are from different countries around the world. For instance, I have a friend who is, he's from Italy. I have some other friends from Spain, from Japan. So it's just really neat that a direct international access at school, but also where you're living at too, in the heart of Manhattan, right? And this is just a general overview of Mercy College and where we're kind of located. So we do take up those floors. And if you do decide to come to Mercy, this could be your home, this, uh, this building right here, which is really neat. And then finally, we do have the Bronx campus. I would say this is more of a commuter campus. Should you choose to have a, a class here, no worries at all. You can definitely take one up there, but really at Dobbs Ferry and the Manhattan campus, you'll find all of your classes there. So there's really no need for traveling. But let's say you do have to travel to the Bronx campus for some reason, we do have direct shuttles from our Dobbs Ferry campus in uh, Westchester County. So that's there as well. Something that I would like to say from a student perspective that I enjoyed at my time at Mercy College is definitely the PAC program. So just I, another fun fact, right? I am from Jersey, so I kind of understand the transition from going to another out-of-state school and just going away from home. Lord knows my mother was worried, but something that I really enjoyed about Mercy and that made me feel more comfortable is our PAC program. So with the PAC program, they're basically like guidance counselors, but I personally like to call them the parents of your college experience. So they're there for you when it comes to academic, uh, you know, academic reasons or personal reasons. I like to use this example of let's say you don't want to, you don't know what you want to do in terms of, you know, career wise, they will sit down with you and they'll go over the pros and the cons and your passions really. So that's something that was always really neat about the PAC program. Aside from obviously the personal aspect, there is the academic aspect. That's why they're there too. So they will help you navigate your degree requirements. Again, like I said, major exploration. That's number one right there. And connecting with different resources on campus. So uh, should you decide to apply to Mercy College, of course, I would direct you to those different resources as a New Jersey recruiter. However, once you do become a student at Mercy College, this would be your point of contact for the remainder of your four years. They will stay with you from freshman to senior year, which is something a lot of our students uh, really do enjoy. So that there's this amazing program at Mercy College. Now, in terms of, okay, I'm doing my studies and now how can I apply my studies and use it for the real world, you know, uh, in terms of my career. We do have a specific department called the Career and Professional Development Department. I was a student worker there, so I definitely can give you guys the ins and outs of how does this department work. But again, very similar to PAC in terms of the major in career exploration. That's there too. However, they do a little bit more of a deep dive, I would say. Our career coaches really focus on doing resume and cover letter review for our students, interview skills, and obviously having a lot of career fairs. Our spring career fair is actually coming up, which is really exciting. So, uh, but nevertheless, our career and professional development services, they're absolutely phenomenal. So our career coaches are actually personalized and tailored to your major. So they're specialized to handle students and let's say that are in the nursing major, the vet tech major, so it's really neat to just kind of get that personalized attention, if you will. And some of our student internships would include uh, students uh, going to Marvel, Google, IBM. A lot of my friends ended up in NBC Universal and Capital One. So this is obtainable. And we do have a lot of uh, amazing clubs and organizations on campus. We are what's really popular right now is actually our esports program, which is really neat. So uh, there's amazing clubs and organizations on Mercy College. And now to kind of get into the athletics, just in case we have some athletes in the room, we are D2. So for our women's sports, we have basketball, field hockey, lacrosse, soccer, softball, and volleyball. 
And for our men's athletics, we have baseball, basketball, lacrosse, and soccer. So that's also really great. Now, in terms of the academics at Mercy College, we do have five schools, business, liberal arts, education, social and behavioral sciences, and uh, health and natural sciences. And I would say these are just some of the most popular majors at Mercy College. Of course, we, have, we actually have now 100 plus majors at Mercy College, so the opportunities are quite endless. And just to give a quick comparison, these are some of our local uh, neighboring schools where Mercy College is 20K per year. Now, something right off the bat for you guys is the Mercy Blue Scholarship. You're not going to be looking at 20K. You're actually going to be looking at 18K. So as a New Jersey resident, you get a $2,000 scholarship automatically. So that's there as well. So in terms of next steps, Mercy is SAT and um, ACT optional, letter of recommendation optional, and essay optional. As, um, as someone who does look over applications, all we're really looking at is your transcripts, to be honest. In case you're interested, you can find us on the Common App and also directly through our website. And just in case there's some seniors in the room, please feel free to take down this fee waiver code. I wouldn't want you guys paying for that uh, $40 application. So please go ahead. And in case you're interested in getting in contact with me and learning more about the college, here's my phone number and my email address. But thank you so much, guys. I hope to connect with you all soon. Thank you. Wonderful. All right. So I am going to invite everyone back on screen so we can hear from each of you one more time. Um, so I have a question to pose and uh, we'll kind of go around in the same order uh, that was presented and uh, hear from everybody again. So what advice would you give someone going through the college search process now? And we're going to jump back to University of Mary Washington to start us off. Yeah, so um, I think the best piece of advice that I give to students going through the search, college search process um, is to make sure that you're taking time to really check in with yourself. Um, it can be really overwhelming. Um, you have all of these different pieces of advice coming at you from all of these different directions. There are so many different schools and types of schools and things that you're thinking about. Um, and so really making sure that you're checking in with yourself and what you want and what you need through this process is really important because at the end of the day, um, you are looking for the best fit for you. Um, and it's really great that you have all of these people in your life giving you all of these pieces of advice, um, but you're not going to do well if you're not happy. And so really making sure that you're taking the time to check in with yourself and making that list of like, what kind of environment do I need? What am I looking for? Um, will make this go much more smoothly and will help you find that right fit. Thank you so much. Ramapo College of New Jersey. Yes, thank you. Great question, by the way. Um, the main thing or one of the things that you should think about really is trying your best to visit the schools that you are considering. Um, I wouldn't even stress about trying to apply to 15, 20, 25 schools. Um, if you're interested in 20 schools, research and really bring that number down to like maybe six, seven, five. So then you can visit all five or six of those schools and then really make a really educated decision on where you want to go. And you can really feel the vibe of those five schools. So try to get those numbers down. It'll help with fees as well. Um, and then that way you can visit the schools and really and really fill out each school. Thank you so much. University of Southern Maine, what is your advice? I would say my advice to any student going through this process is just know that you are not alone. Uh, we are literally in these positions for a reason to assist you through this process. And as everyone on the screen has said, you know, we all have territories. We all have a certain region that we're responsible for. We are all helping guide us and our, your, your students and, and you through this process. So feel free to use this as a resource. Um, we absolutely love to get to know who these students are that potentially might be coming onto our campus community. So please use this as a resource. We're here for you. Thank you. College of New Jersey. Sure. So great question. And everyone shared great advice so far that I would second. Um, what I would add is kind of along the lines of what Julia shared to really try to engage the admissions counselors and the admissions team as much as you're able to. So take advantage of all of the different kinds of visit opportunities, other ways in which the admissions office um, makes themselves available to you all. And that will obviously help you, hopefully help you learn more about a particular school and assist you in your process. But in some cases, it can also be a good way to demonstrate interest in a school. And at schools that really look at 
how engaged students have been throughout their process like TCNJ that can really help your application stand out compared to students who haven't been as engaged with the office or with the college. Thanks so much. And Hofstra. Yeah, um, I would say uh, take a breath. Um, try to take some of the pressure off yourself. Um, like we heard from Amanda, um, Amanda H, I should say, you know, check in with yourself. Ultimately know that wherever you end up, your college experience is what you make it. You will get out of it what you put into it. So as long as you're being realistic and honest with yourself, doing it for your own reasons and not trying to meet someone else's expectations and you put you know all that effort into it you will have a good college experience and come out you know hopefully with no regrets uh, or maybe just a couple but uh, those those are just good stories to tell and, and just you know try to enjoy the whole process because it should be fun it shouldn't be stressful thank you and mercy college all right, y'all. So I really love this question just because as a recent grad graduate and I'm only 21 years old, uh, just to be really quite frank with you guys. So in terms of just having that recent experience and just being in the role that I am in now, Lord, have I learned so much. And yes, something like uh, Julia expressed earlier, please do connect with the admissions recruiters and the counselors. Oh my gosh, we are here to help you. We are assigned to that territory for a reason. Whatever it may be, parents as well, please engage with us. If it's a financial question, a residential question, whatever the case may be, we are here to help you and we are here to push it forward, so to speak. So definitely please do that. And of course, like everyone said, take the pressure off of yourself and make sure to connect with the schools that you really are interested in. Put the effort more towards that. Uh, trust me, guys, it's it's a huge difference. So that's my best advice. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was a great way to end. Thanks for us. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, so thank you to our participants for spending this evening with us, learning a little bit more. Um, and thank you to our presenters for putting all this information together and spending the evening with us as well. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We appreciate any feedback you can provide. Um, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other recordings at strivescan.com slash Edison. And with that, we are going to wrap up. Thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful night and weekend. Bye-bye.